Have you ever been in one of those situations where maybe you're trying to take a photograph at a very long focal length, or maybe you're trying to use a very slow shutter speed, or maybe you're trying to shoot some video while walking around, or maybe you're still drunk from the night before and you just cannot keep the camera still to save your life and you think, I wish this thing would help me out. That's what image stabilization's for. Image stabilization can be very confusing at times because it comes in multiple forms and it's got so many different names as well. So today, let's try and delve in and start to try and understand about the forms of image stabilization. The three main types being optical, in-body and electronic. But firstly, let's understand what image stabilization actually is. Now, image stabilization is the camera's way of trying to help you not get blur in your photographs. Now, there's three kinds of blur in a photograph. There's your background blur or your bokeh, there's motion blur and there's camera shake. Now, background blur or bokeh is that out of focus background you wanna try and get if you're isolating a subject. Now, motion blur is where objects within your scene are moving around. So from the moment that you open the shutter to start taking a picture to the moment it then closes at the end, if anything within the scene has moved around during that time, it's going to have been registered by multiple pixels on the sensor. And then this is where we then get that ghosting effect from all the pixels having picked up the same object. Then there's camera shake. Now, camera shake is brought about from the hand holding a camera. It doesn't matter how steady a hand you think you've got, you will naturally start to input very small movements into the camera if you are trying to hand hold it for too long a time. Now, how long you can get away with hand holding a shot for without having camera shake depends on how steady a hand you are and also the focal length that you are shooting. Now, bear in mind, the blur from camera shake comes about in the same way as the blur from motion blur, in as much as if you're moving the camera, then relatively all the objects within the scene are going to be moving. So if you're shaking the camera, then all those objects in the scene are going to be picked up by multiple pixels, and thus you get a blurring effect. Now, if you're shooting with a wider angle lens, the whole scene is stretched out, so all the objects within the scene are a lot smaller, which means that they have to move further relative to the camera in order for them to be picked up by multiple pixels. Whereas if you're shooting with a telephoto lens and you're zoomed in on a subject, even the slightest amount of movement becomes magnified. So shooting with a longer focal length means that it takes less time for objects to move around the sensor enough to be registered as blur. So we need a much shorter shutter speed in order to make sure that doesn't happen. Now for a general rule of thumb for how long an exposure you can get away with hand holding a camera without having camera shake, the rule is make sure your shutter speed matches your effective focal length. So for example, if you're shooting at 24 millimeters on a full frame camera, your effective focal length is 24 millimeters. So as long as you are trying to at least attempt to keep the camera still, as long as your shutter is over a 24th of a second, you shouldn't see any camera shake in your shots. Now bear in mind, I said effective focal length. So if you're shooting 100 millimeters on an APS-C camera, then you're looking at an effective focal length of 150, 160 millimeters. So shooting up at 150th, 160th of a second should mean no camera shake. But then you've got image stabilization. Now. This works by trying to detect any vibrations that you're inputting into the camera from you hand holding it and try to compensate for it. Inside either the camera body itself or in the lens, there will be small gyroscope sensors. And these start to detect the vibrations and the change in orientation of the camera and will then start to compensate for it. So what are the three kinds of stabilization? Firstly, let's look at optical. Now, optical stabilization is always found in the lens itself because it's using the optics within the lens to move the path of light to try and cancel out the vibrations that you're inputting into the camera. Now, lens-based stabilization has many different names depending on which manufacturer you are dealing with because manufacturers can't use the same names for everything. So, for example, Canon lenses are denoted as IS or image stabilization, whereas Nikon lenses are VR or vibration reduction. Tamron use VC for vibration compensation, whereas Sigma use OS for optical stabilization. Sony use OSS for optical steady shot and Fuji use OIS for optical image. You get the point. Optical is regarded as being the most effective stabilizer around, especially if you're shooting video. 
Because it's physically moving the light path of the lens, it can give a much more precise, smoother look to your footage. So if you're moving around whilst hand holding the camera, you don't get that same juttery effect as you would with probably the other stabilizing units. The downsides, however, cost, because stabilizer units aren't cheap. And because it's built into the lens, it means that every single lens that you buy, if you want it to be stabilized, you have to pay extra to get a lens with a stabilizer. Then adding a stabilizer also adds to the complexity of making the lens in the first place. So you'll generally find stabilizers in slower aperture lenses, such as anything from kind of f2.8 down but you will rarely find stabilizers in fast aperture primes because the lens is so complicated to begin with, adding a stabilizer just makes it even harder. Then you have in-body stabilization. Now, in-body stabilization, as the name implies, is inside the camera body. And rather than moving the optics within the lens, it's moving the sensor itself. So with optical stabilization, the light path is physically manipulated by the lens in order to try and keep all the bits of the scene landing on the same part of the sensor. But with in-body stabilization, the light path doesn't change, but the sensor moves around behind the lens to try and catch the light in the same bit every single time. Because the stabilizer is built into the camera, it means that any lens that you mount onto it, regardless of whether it has optical stabilization or not, it's still gonna be stabilized from the sensor itself. The downside, however, is the sensor-based stabilization doesn't always work as effectively as optical. Particularly for video footage, you will find if you shoot handheld video footage with an optical stabilizer, it's going to be a lot smoother than sensor-based. Now, the difference between the two stabilizers isn't as apparent if you're shooting stills, and obviously, Having sensor-based stabilization when shooting video is better than no stabilization at all, but it's just something to bear in mind. Some manufacturers allow their sensor-based stabilization to work alongside their optical to give you extra stability, while other manufacturers, if you're using a lens that has optical stabilization, it will completely override the sensor-based, and then you have some manufacturers that just don't have sensor-based at all. Then we have electronic stabilization. So with electronic stabilization, there's no moving parts. What actually happens is the camera doesn't use the full area of the sensor when taking an image. So the edges of the sensor aren't being used. Then if it does start to detect any movement, it's gonna start moving which pixels it's reading from within the sensor to try and keep the image in the middle of the frame at all times. Trying to talk and move at the same time is not easy. I can see why they say men can't multitask. Lastly, electronic. The only real positive of electronic is that because it's all software based, there's no moving parts, it's dirt cheap. So it's an easy way to give some stabilization to budget level cameras. However, it only compensates in two axes. Also, you add an additional crop factor because you're cutting into what you can see from the sensor and it just doesn't give you quite the same stabilized look as you would get from either optical or sensor shift. So there you have it three kinds of stabilizer unit and the pros and cons to each. I hope this has helped clear up a few things for you or it's helped pass five minutes while you're meant to be working and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.